I'd like to briefly offer a, um, a description of what we might call an argument for God's existence based on the, the, the desire for happiness. Uh, this argument is not new to me by any stretch of the imagination. It is a, a very ancient argument. We can find something like it uh, or the foundations of it in, in the ancient philosopher Aristotle. We can find it uh, in other great uh, thinkers uh, through the ages. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas would most uh, closely represent the way that I'd like to present this argument. Uh, St. Augustine has uh, a form of this argument. Uh, so it's nothing new uh, with me, but I did want to offer a brief description of it. Uh, partially because I just made a video about uh, Victoria Osteen making some remarks about uh, our uh, worship of God bringing to us happiness. And so the idea of happiness is on my mind. It's also sort of a, a perennially interesting topic, I think, to us as human beings. And partly because I think at root we all, in every choice we make, every deliberate act that we make, and perhaps even on, on, on the level of every act that we make as human beings, not even the, just the ones that we contemplate or, or think through carefully, uh, we are at core happiness-seeking beings. We are looking for fulfillment. We are looking for completion as human beings. And that's what creates, I think, a significant amount of unrest and anxiety that human beings have. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, people who specialize in helping people with their anxieties. We have all kinds of medication uh, that, are, that are very common throughout our country. We have psychologists and psychiatrists. Uh, we have self-help books all over the place uh, where people are trying to find the key or the, um, uh, the path uh, to finding some type of uh, settledness within themselves, some kind of fulfillment uh, within themselves. And there are various things that human beings try to uh, use or try to access thinking that they will bring to them happiness. Uh, for example, some people think that money or a lot of money will bring them happiness. Uh, but as Aristotle pointed out a long time ago, uh, the use of money uh, to try to achieve happiness uh, is involves a, a kind of confusion or category mistake. Uh, to think that, that happiness can come merely by the acquisition of wealth is very uh, uh, misleading because First of all, there are plenty of people that have a lot of money who are not happy. And one need only look at the, the many sad cases coming out of uh, Hollywood or, or places where people have lots of money uh, to find that it doesn't bring to them complete uh, fulfillment. Um, in fact, to the contrary, uh, I've heard that uh, the statistics show that the, the more wealthy people are, uh, they tend to have uh, greater levels of unhappiness or unsettledness. I've known people, for example, who had lots of money, but they couldn't sit still. They had to keep working. They had to make more money. Even though they had more than they could live on the rest of their life, uh, they, they saw it as a game. They were seeking something beyond the money. Uh, those who don't have money think that money is going to bring them happiness, but the reality is that money is simply a means to an end. Uh, money is only valuable insofar as it can help you to acquire something uh, beyond it. Uh, now, some people might think that possessions are what give them happiness. Uh, but the reality is, I think, that all of us can imagine a world in which uh, perhaps we were in a, a deserted island somewhere where we, where we had all the possessions that we could possibly imagine, but yet we found ourselves empty and unfulfilled. Uh, perhaps we want something more than that. We want uh, relationships with other human persons and not just a bunch of possessions or things or money. Some people think that power is what's going to give them um, uh, happiness or success or notoriety or fame, that all of these are things that will bring people happiness. Again, you can find plenty of people who have these things and yet they're unfulfilled. They're, they, it seems as if for us as human beings, there is always a horizon out there that is beckoning us to something more beyond any of the finite, temporary, changing sorts of things that we can acquire. Uh, as much as a person might seem to get, or as successful as they might be, as famous as they may be, all of that is illusory. Uh, we lose it. The people who were famous when I was growing up in athletics or, or television or movies or whatever, those people have passed off the scene for the most part. A few are still around, uh, but they don't have the same kind of fame or the same kind of notoriety that they had uh, a long time ago. Uh, and so those are all things that come and go. We as human beings want something that endures, something that will last, um, and, and that will last indefinitely. Uh, we don't want temporary happiness. We want a happiness that will endure forever. 
And so the question that we have to ask at some point is, if no collection of finite things or limited things, whether they be power, money, wealth, sex, uh, uh, sexual gratification or whatever, no matter what it is that we think will bring to us happiness, we always find that there's something more yet beyond that that is calling for us uh, and, and reaching for us. Um, St. Thomas drew the conclusion from this that even though we are wanting um, the, the good, our will is longing for what we, what we take to be good and satisfying to us that would bring to us happiness, what we find is as we are in the quest for goodness, as we are in the quest for happiness, we find that none of the temporary finite goods, the changing goods that we have, are all of that that we are looking for. And so our will keeps striving beyond it. The only thing that can satisfy uh, the human will it absolutely and exhaustively would be an infinite good, would be a boundless good, would be a completely satisfying good that could never be lost. Now, either that desire is in vain and human beings are simply made to be or we simply have evolved to be uh, creatures that want what we can't have. Uh, we desire a kind of ultimate happiness and fulfillment that is unreachable, that is unattainable because it doesn't exist. Or on the other hand, that desire that we have for that boundless, infinite good, that all of the things in this world are only partial uh, tastes of it. Uh, when I have a close relationship in this world or when I have some things in this world that fulfill something in me or satisfy something in me, it's not because those things are really what can satisfy me. It's because they partially reveal something that is infinitely all that those things are in a limited way. And so if that reality exists, then this life is an opportunity to keep looking beyond everything that we experience to embrace the ultimate source of all these limited goods that we experience in this world. And therefore, this life is a journey. It's a pilgrim journey moving toward an ultimate reality that deep within we are all searching for, whether we recognize it or not, we are all searching for it on a very deep level in every choice we make, in every good that we try to acquire. And we call that, by the way, God.